Click the link in the description for your free Amsoil catalog. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to some of our friends. The Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Search for them on Facebook. Central Minnesota Pond Racing. Search for them on Facebook. The historic Lancaster Motel for the ultimate Eastern Trail Riding Adventure. Crane's Snowmobile Museum at 172 Main Street in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Vintage Snowmobile Club of America Quarterly Magazine. The New Hampshire Snowmobile Museum at Bear Brook State Park in Allenstown, New Hampshire. If you decide to advertise with the Vintage Snowmobile Podcast, this could be your advertising message. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here. I have a robust lineup of Vintage Snowmobile Entertainment on tap for you tonight. But before we get into all of that, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to leave a comment. Uh, let me know where you're viewing this from and whether you are a first-time viewer or a regular viewer. Now, to our first-time viewers, uh, if this is your first time checking this out tonight, I hope you have a good time with us tonight and hope that you decide to join us here each and every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. This podcast simulcasts to eight different places across Facebook and YouTube. So wherever you're viewing this right now, circle back here in one week's time and we'll be waiting for you with another episode. To our regular viewers who are here week after week, month after month, and season after season, you guys are the ones who make this possible and keep this going, and we very, very much appreciate it. Thank you so much for that. Let's take a few quick comments here, and then we'll bring Rob on and, and get the party started. Let's see. Our good friend Reese Flurry says hearing he can hear us loud and clear. He's a regular viewer from Tupper Lake, New York. Nice to see you, Reese. Uh, our regular viewers, Stacy and Art Fosler from Platkill, New York, say the audio keeps cutting out. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Is anyone else experiencing that? Hopefully that's a one isolated incident. If anyone else has experienced the audio, experiencing the audio cutting out, uh, please leave a message uh, so we can be aware of that. Um, Dominic, Anthony, Dominic Anthony Kane from Michigan is in the house tonight. He's a regular viewer as well. Uh, Dirk Seams is here tonight from Minnesota. Good to see you, Dirk. We're going to be playing one of your video clips in a little while. Uh, oh, we've got some comments coming in. Uh, Michael Carvela says it sounds good. Uh, from Ishpeming, Michigan. So the audio sounds good for him, and Dirk Seams says the audio sounds good as well. Hopefully that's an isolated incident. I apologize to Stacy and Art if they're having some audio problems. I'm not sure what to do with that, um, 
but it sounds it does sound like it's an isolated incident. So we're going to continue continue on here, and we're going to bring Rob on uh, one click away here. There he is in the flesh. Rob, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Trying to stay dry up here. For sure. Getting some rain in Ontario. Well, you're figuring out Ontario. We should be having snow. I had two feet of snow a week ago, and now I've got grass showing in my backyard again. That's yes. insane. It's a different kind of winter this year. Yeah, it sure is. And northern Vermont here, too. I'm on the Vermont-Quebec border, and it we had a little snow this afternoon, but it's turned to rain. So we have probably a foot of snow on the ground, but we'll probably lose that if that keeps up for very long. So We had 12 hours of rain today. 12. Oh, that's going to do some damage. Heavy rain. Heavy rain. Oh, yeah, that's going to do some damage to the snow for sure. For sure. Well, oh, we've got one more comment in here and we'll let, let's see. Jeff Lind saying they're having some audio problems. Uh, we sound good here in Detroit. So it sounds like it's just that one isolated incident. It sounds like it's good in uh, Detroit for Jeff. Well, that's good to hear. I'm sorry for the Foslers, uh, but hopefully it's just the one isolated incident. So let's take a look here at the menu for tonight. Uh, we had our good friend Josh Leverker. Uh, we had planned for him to come on, but something has come up on his end, and he's not able to make it, so we're going to reschedule that. Um, so what we're going to do instead is I've got a couple of video clips. I've got a clip. Uh, the first clip I'm going to play is from the VSCA National Vintage Snowmobile Show in Old Forge, New York, this past June. So I'm going to play that clip. If you like Arctic Cats from the early 70s, as I do, you're really going to enjoy this clip. Let me get it queued up here, and we'll take a look. Okay, it looks like it's stalled for some reason. Let me uh, do a little clicking here, see if we can't jumpstart this video. There we go. I didn't like it because it's ugly. Now, this belongs to Jeff Jones. I was just talking to him earlier. He's involved with uh, Leaf Spring Outlaws. They do a lot of grass drags here in upstate New York. I don't know the way around the map here in upstate New York, so I don't know how close to... How close to Old Forge their re the grass drag activities are. Couldn't tell you. And I ran into Scott Warner as well. He was on the podcast not too long ago talking up his grass drags. Leaf Spring Outlaws, if you're curious about that. Beautiful TX. Mike Kempfer. Owned and restored by Mike Kempfer. Both of these. Unbelievable. And this is owned by Mike Kempfer as well. Triple. Two plus one. He equals three cylinders. Oh, Jared Ellis. Thank you. Yeah, I do miss the podcast. But it is different in the summer. And um, I'm doing a muscle car podcast over the summer months, so if you're curious, do check it out. Is that Lucas Bristol over there? What's going on? Hey, how you doing, man? Good, you? Good. Give a big wave for the camera. <laughs> nice to see you. Yeah, you too. You get some cats under here? Uh, in the building. In the building. Nice, the yeah. Formula 2 and Steve Fenn on CXD special. Sweet. I'll look for that. Yep. Sweet. You guys come out yesterday or today? Yesterday. Or? Yeah. That's right. I think your dad said you guys were coming out yesterday. Yep. Good. Came out yesterday. Where are you guys staying? Uh, yeah, good Forge. Motel. Okay. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, we're over at the 19th Green. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not that far away. Good. Yeah. How's the powder coating good. business? Busy. busy. Good. Mm -hmm. That's a nice problem to have. Mm hmm. Cool. Yep. There's a lot of sleds here. Yeah, <laughs> isn't this amazing? Mm -hmm. And then he, it was a him that had a sled at um, Island Pond, Pond. that he won the a formula. Yep. Yeah, so he won an award on that? Yeah. Sweet. Very cool, man. That's the way to keep him interested. Yeah, you got him. He's he's locked in now for life, right? Yeah, he's locked in for life. That's cool. <laughs> See you later, Mike. Nice seeing you. There's no turning back. Wow, what about this king cat, huh? The old triple. Look how wide that thing is. That is a beast. 71 650 king cat. Special factory built racing sled. 
total of 113 of these in production. I don't know how well this mirror is coming out on the camera, but it's got a J-Lo three-cylinder 650, triple wall barrel carbs. It's got a unique three expansion chamber exhaust, Salisbury 11R race clutch, and an 18-inch cleated track. This is owned by Henry and Jeff Briscoe of Horseheads, New York, if I'm reading that right. What a beast that is. I bet that makes some noise. And I bet that goes down the track fast, too. What a beast. Oh, yeah, even from this side. Look how wide that is. You just know this is a beast. Oh, man, I love it. Something about cats in the early 70s. There's just nothing but nothing but nothing like it. I mean, I love all the other brands, too, but the cats from the early 70s. This is a sweet ride as well. And I don't see a tag on there as to who this belongs to or any details about it, but it sure is beautiful. Love those gauges with the purple trim. Purple and green. This is what a... So if you're viewing this, what do you think? 74, 75? The year? I don't think it's a 76. I don't think it's as late as that. I'm thinking 74, 75. Maybe it's 73, I don't know. I don't know, what do you guys think? What year is this? 75Z, Skip Estes, thank you. Wish I had cash prizes or cars, new cars or something to give for people who get these things, answer these questions. 75 only, cool deal. Thank you, Jared. Now, is it, is it just me, or is there something really special going on with Cat in the early 70s? I love all the brands, but there's just really something special about Cat in the early 70s, like this kind of stuff. I mean, who else was doing that? Saddlebags with a leopard print. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Love that front end. 71 Panther. Now this is owned by Zoc Dario from Shady Coke, New York. I'm sure I mispronounced that, but and by the way, if you're just joining us, we're at the 17th annual Vintage Snowmobile Show put on by the VSCA, the Vintage Snowmobile Club of America, all weekend in Old Forge, New York. Come on down and join the fun. And uh, if you're looking for a place to stay, we're at the uh, 19th Green Motel, right on the drag, right on the drag in uh, Old Forge. They've still got vacancy. We were very happy with our room. Had a chance to visit with the owners. They were very nice. We got a nice swimming pool over there. Oh, Skip Estes says my dad had those exact bags on his '73 Panther. How cool is that? Oh man, only in the '70s though, huh? Only in the '70s. And I miss the 70s. Who here misses the 70s? We're back. And yeah, I posed that question. Who here misses the 70s? Oh. But what do you think of that, Rob? Do you miss the they, 70s? Artie Katz was the Cadillacs back then. They sure yeah. were. My dad had skidoos and motor skis, and then he hurt his back. He had to buy an Artie Cat. He couldn't ride the other ones. Yeah, the Artie Cats were the Cadillacs. They rode so much better than everybody else, and they looked better. Like, look at that yeah. leopard seat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Only in the seventies, you know, yeah. uh, that was so amazing. Yeah, because we had cats too. We we my, the first sled my my dad bought was I think a '69 Olympic, and it was it it was good in that it, it could go just about anywhere. But with those bogey wheels and being kind of narrow, it was yeah, real yeah, tippy, yeah, and yeah. he was trying to do the family thing on it, pulling a sleigh and everything. And uh, it just wasn't happening. So then you got the '72 Cheetah, and that just changed everything. Yeah. Um, and we were we were cat family after that. Yeah. Yeah. I still and, got, and I they, still got my dad's '72 Jag. Yeah. '76 Jag, and he bought my mom a brand new 1979 Jag that my sister still plays with. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, they just keep running. Yeah, they were tanks. Yeah. But he Let's bought see. himself a um, a Panther 5000 for himself. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very and nice. the big, big backrest on the back. You could put the extra gas can on the back, or you had a box in there to put go ice fishing with, and that was his nice. Cadillac. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Those were the days. Yeah. Well, let's see. We've got some comments that have come in. We've got Stacy and Art Fosler. They say the audio is working good now. So that's 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 good to hear. That's awesome. And we've got someone on Facebook saying that was a 75Z. Very cool. Uh, Jeff Lind says the Suzuki 440 Fury was the same thing except for with the sparkles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I rebadged kind of. I know what you're saying. Okay, and Reese Fleury says born in the 70s. Very cool. And uh, Reese Fleury also says great show. Can't wait for the next one. Cool. And what, why, don't you much- ask, why don't you ask him to send us in some videos of his trailers, trails? They just redid a new railway line through their property down there, the club. And that should be some nice trails he's going to have down there. Yeah, for sure. Because you had a chance to meet Reese a couple of weeks ago, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yes. Real nice job. Spent some time with him. Wonderful. Yeah. And we, we both very much appreciate that he's a regular viewer. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, let's see. What else have we got here? We're on item number two, which means it's time for announcements. Um, we're going to give uh, Rob a chance to tell us about AMSOIL, and then we've got a, a few events we're going to talk about. So I'm going to put you full screen here, Rob, and and, uh, okay. and let you go. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. It's been around since 1972. This year, we're having our 50th anniversary down at AMSOIL. And they have a number of different products, not just the engine oils, diesel oils, compression oils, receptacular oil, two cycle oils. In 1972, they came out with the Sabre oil that's 100 to 1. That's what we use on our chainsaws, weed eaters, our 200 Black Max, even the, even the older snowmobiles that you had the pre mix, we used our Sabre oil. And all the other companies say, you can't do that, you're going to get sued because everything else back then was 32 to 1, 16 to 1, 18 to 1. It's perfect at my cabin because I have one gas can and everything runs at 100 to 1. doesn't matter what piece of equipment there. It's a lifesaver having that one mixture for everything. And the reason they can do that, because most oils burn off at around 275, 240, they burn off. Amsoil doesn't burn off to over 300 degrees. So you don't need as much oil and it has a stronger film strength. So the engines last two to three times longer. It gives you more protection. At, at 100 to 1 than most of the other, I won't mention the steel products, at 32 to 1. It gives you more protection so the engines last longer. Our injector oil, to, um, I love you. if you see the sign behind me, it says uh, run on freedom. Amsoil came out with that promotion because some of the companies were saying, if you buy a Skidoo, you got to run Skidoo oil. You have no, no warranty. Well, Amsoil came out with a program. If you bought a brand new machine, or even if you got a one-year-old machine and you put Amsoil in it, Amsoil is going to give you an extra year warranty. So you're going to get a two-year warranty on your machine if you're running Amsoil because Amsoil has so much confidence that their oil will protect more than the manufacturer oils will that they're going to give you an extra year warranty. So for more information like that, pick up one of our catalogs from Mike. It has all the information in it and everything about all our products in there for you. Yeah, for sure. Just click the link in the description. Get yourself a free catalog. And uh, Amsoil also has an incredible program. This is the way to get the best possible value from Amsoil. And that's by clicking the link in the description for the Amsoil Preferred Customer Program. Uh, it's, it's just a couple of clicks, and it's, it's a $10 fee for six months. And that $10 fee is almost like a Costco membership. It gives you the deepest possible discounts you can possibly get for Amsoil. In most cases, it's 25%. And if you do that on your first order, that $10 fee that you pay is going to pay for itself in most cases on that first order, pay for itself and then some. Uh, so it's an incredible value. Let me pop this graphic on the screen. It shows you some of, there's a bit of a delay here. Here we go. It shows you the, the different benefits. You get free shipping when the order is over $100, $5 on your birthday. Every order that's over $5, I'm sorry, every order that's over $100, you get $5 back. You get exclusive promotions that you're notified of that you wouldn't hear of otherwise. And again, it's almost up to 25% on most of those items. So it's the best possible value <coughs> you can get when you're buying Amsoil. And, you, and once you're signed up for the preferred customer program, you get that each and every time you order. So it's locked in. They, they, they've associated that with your name in the system. So it's an incredible value. And, uh, yeah, it's just one click away, link in the description. Um, so, yeah, we've got a couple of events we're going to tell you about. Uh, there's an event coming up this weekend I'm planning to go. Uh, the Country Riders Snowmobile Club is planning to do an event in Newport Center, Vermont, uh, right off Route 100 at 1214 Tatro Road. It's uh, hosted on the Tatro's property. 
Uh, this is their second annual gathering, uh, and it was a, a huge success last year. We're going to look at a video clip of that here in just a few minutes. So if you're in the if you're in northern Vermont, this is very much a show worth checking out. Now, also our friend Josh Leverker, who is going to be on tonight, he couldn't make it tonight. Something came up, but he is hosting a a vintage snowmobile show next weekend, the whiskey at Whiskey Jack's Bar and Grill, uh, Saturday, February the 18th. That is in upstate New York. Uh, we're looking on there to see where it is. Um, Cowansville, uh, Constable, Constableville, I think, New York. I apologize. I, without with, with without bifocals, I, I have to put my face right up into the screen uh, to see that. But I think it's Constableville, New York. Um, but yeah, that's that's a great show as well. And then, um, are you able to make that out, Rob? Yeah, that, I think you're right. But I'm just okay. looking at the antique prizes for the best 1960, 1970, 75. Yeah, and then they got prizes for uh, best restored, best modified. They got a lot of different awards they're going to do. For sure, for sure. And Josh Leverker, I have to say, is involved in quite a few shows in upstate New York. And any of those shows that you attend, they're very, 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 very well run and very well put together, well organized. Uh, the shows that he's involved with are very much worth checking out. Um, and then, of course, our good friend Ray Lacasse. He's got a show coming up March 4th in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. They're going to have a vintage ride. They're also going to have the Parade of Lights out on one of the lakes in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. Uh, and they're trying, I think, I don't know if this is the year. I think it is. They're trying to achieve a world record of how many sleds can be out there with lights uh, doing this Parade of Lights on the lake. Uh, so that promises to be an excellent event as well. Well, cool. So we've got a comment that's come in. Let's take a look at that. And then... Um, We'll get back into the program here. Matthew Vincent Brayman says there's a show in New Hampshire this Saturday as well. Good to know. Matthew, if you're able to, uh, let us know a little bit more about that as far as what town that is, anything you might know about it. We'll pop that on the screen so people can, can find out about that in case it's near them. And thank you, Matthew, too, for letting us know about that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to play a video, and we'll come back after the video and uh, see if Matthew's left some information for us. Uh, the video, we're on item number two. This is uh, some footage. I was, we were just talking about that vintage snowmobile show in Newport Center, Vermont. This is a clip from last year's show. Now, it was over 20 below when I got there last year. Thankfully, there wasn't any wind, so it was pretty bearable. But the um, the the temperature was messing with the camera a little bit in, in that the audio was out of sync. And then also the clarity of the video image comes in and out. But I was able to get some cool interviews in spite of that. Uh, so let me line this up here. Let me cue this up, and we'll take a look at uh, some footage from that show. So at some point I want to find the owner of the ski rule and get some comments from him. They say he's wearing a Yamaha outfit. He's a younger guy. I also want to get some comments with the organizers of this. Now our friend Brian Robillard says there's still uh, quite a few shows coming up at Hobbs Brewery Crane Snowmobile Museum, which is uh, uh, February 5th. Also the State Fair in Rutland, Vermont. I think it's February 17th or 19th. I'm not positive on that, but if you're curious, look it up on uh, Facebook. Uh, also the Bear Brook Snowmobile Museum. Hello, Keith. Thank you for the compliment. And we got a lot of modern folks stopping by to check out the goings on. And uh, I'm going to try to catch up with some of the organizers here for some comments from them. And I was talking to a, one of the groomer the guys in charge of the groomers. I think I'm going to get a ride in one of these groomers at some point and do some video with that. So that could be fun. Yeah, we're live on Facebook with 20 people watching. Cool, a whole 20 people? Yeah, wow. we had 50 earlier, but... How many? 150? 50. 50? Yeah, but it'll get plenty of views throughout the day. But you want to say hi? What was your no. name? Yeah, I live around here. Nice. Yeah. You don't? Der Derby Line. Derby Line? Yeah, not too far. Yeah. Now, what was your name? Randy. Randy. Yeah, nice to meet you, Randy. Newport Center. Nice. So you're a member of the club here? Yeah. Good, yeah. good. I've been for... 30 years? Yeah, nice. 30, 20 something years, 30 years? And this club was founded in 1975, I think. 74. 74, yeah. Nice. So been around for almost 50 years. Yeah. yeah That's great. awesome. Back in the heyday. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't here back then. I was in Wisconsin. Right? Wisconsin, yeah. yeah. How do you have... Here, but, hey, divorced parents, you know, they ship back and forth. Oh, wow, yeah. I was more or less raised on a tobacco farm in Stolten, Wisconsin. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Now, do you have vintage sleds here today? I have an old sled, but I don't have a vintage one here. I have a, an older one, but... I, I, this one's 21 years old, but... Yeah, well, let's talk it up for a second. Do you feel like talking it up? Well, it's just a it's just a 500 Trail Indy. Yeah. It's ported and polished. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's fun to ride. 
my wife's. Your wife's, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> I can't ride these these newer sleds. I've tried. With a rider forward, is that yeah, uncomfortable? Yeah, I can't or? do the forward riding style. I, I, I've been on, a, on an Indy my whole life, basically. And yeah. I first one I ever had sitting right there. The Rup. Oh, yes, yeah. I had one of them when I lived in Stoughton, Wisconsin. The one on the very end there. 73. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So you're going to run this podcast all day? As long as I can, yeah, yeah. As long as the battery holds up and the temperature doesn't get messed with the camera. Well, uh, it's just going to do nothing but get warmer now. Yeah. yeah. So I figure if the camera's holding up with this temperature, yeah, yeah. I should be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little above zero now. Oh, good. Yeah, it's warming right up. Yeah, it was 15 below. When got here. Yeah, it was cold. Almost didn't come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at that thermometer when I got up. I was like, oh, what am I doing? God, I couldn't see halfway here. I, I mean, besides wearing glasses, my shit, my bogged up because I don't have one of them fancy electric shields, you know? Yeah, yeah. Cool. If you breathe in it, it's going to fog up. Yes. <laughs> now, you don't know where the owner of that ski rule is, do you? I want to try to. The owner of the ski rule. I is that him opening the hood? Ball. I think he just tipped it up. You might that might be, yeah. There. I want to try Not to get too some... many people will put their hands on their sled unless they want Yeah, it. unless they want it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, cool. It was nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too. Take care, Andy. Yeah. Is this your ski rule? Do you mind making some comments? We're live on Facebook. Sure. Cool. Yeah, just kind of like my name is and this is my... Stop, Vincent. This is my 1971 ski rule. Uh, Grandpa, I bought it originally. Brand new in 1971. Wow, so this has been in the family all these years. Yep. That's amazing. Yep. Everything's original. Wow. That's a nice shape. So no restorations or anything, it's a survivor. That's cool. That seat's in nice shape too, isn't it? They're 71 you say, right? Yeah, we're competing with the noise over there. I'll give them a minute. Get that rub going over there. 71 rub, I think. So you've been riding this since you were a kid, then. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, has it been used all these years, or was it in the barn for? Uh, it, we stored it for a while. Yeah. yeah? Nice. 12 years it's been out. Okay. Ready to go. Good. Did it need much after 12 years? No, nope, put gas in. Really? Yep. Nice. Just a little gas, and it's ready to roll. Yep. It's funny, I remember these when I was a kid. We used to go trail riding and there was a family with like, I don't know, four kids and they had they all had ski rules. So we'd meet them on the trail, putting down the trail with like a half a dozen ski rules, little convoy, ski rule convoy. <laughs> so whenever I see these, it makes me think of that. Yeah, that's really nice. Oh yes, John Spranger Jr. wants me to check out the blizzard. Yeah, we will do exactly that. Cool. Oh, and I've got something for you for doing this on camera with me. Got a DVD for you. There you go. Yeah, well, nice meet you. I appreciate it. Cool, yeah, let's check out that blizzard. Yeah, we're going to get a close-up on this blizzard. i got to find the owner. I want him to talk it up. I saw him pull in, but I don't remember what he was wearing as far as trying to identify him. Just creating shade on this thing. I remember really liking these back in the day, these blizzards. The uh, 79 when they came out with that new body style. That was really hot. This is probably like 77 or 78 though. I don't know. Maybe it's a 79. Because I think this color scheme started in 79. Anyone know? Anyone want to make comments? That's what I think this is as far as the year. Yeah, so we're back, and uh, we'll put that out there to the uh, the viewers. Uh, what year do you think that blizzard was? But uh, yeah, any thoughts? Anything you caught catch your eye on that, Rob? Oh, there were some real nice ones in there. My neighbor had a couple of those ski rolls. Sure. And they were they were fun to take out and play, but they were so tippy. Ski rolls were. <laughs> they right. were so narrow and machine. And buggy. That's, that seven seven the seventy five hundred skidoo. That was a neat machine they came out with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what that's got skidoo nice... back in the racing was that. Yeah, that's one of the sharper looking sleds ever, in my opinion. Yeah, it did Just well the on all that those. It did well on, uh, on uh, the 500 races and stuff like that. That was that was a lot of work they put in to design that for the racing application. Got them back up on top again. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. 
And uh, for the people watching, in case you just joined us in the middle of that video, that, that event is happening again this weekend. We were just looking at last year's event. They're doing it again this Saturday. Let me pop the graphic on the screen here real quick. The Country Riders Snowmobile Club in Newport Center, Vermont, is doing this event. It's on the Tate's Row property on 1214 Tate's Row Road, right off Route 100. Uh, start time is 10 a.m. If you're in the area, northern Vermont, it's, it's a show very much worth take, uh, taking in. And we do have some comments coming in. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, okay, so this show, uh, let me put the first comment up. So Matthew Vincent Bramman was saying there's a show in New Hampshire this Saturday, and we've got the location in Andover, New Hampshire. Cool deal. So if anyone is in that area, that's a show worth checking out. Uh, and then Bonnie Holbrook is saying, uh, oh, where in New Hampshire? Okay, this there's one also in Unity, New Hampshire this Saturday morning, and there's a parade of lights with vintage sleds in Canaan, New Hampshire this Saturday night. Wonderful. I love that, the immediacy of this for people to to post information about shows and events and things going on. Uh, I love that. And here's some more information about that Andover show. Uh, Matthew is saying it's in Andover. They have food and riding as well. He wishes he could post the flyer. He posted it on his profile. Um, so if anyone wants to look up his name, Matthew Vincent Bramman, you can probably find that right on his profile. And then now we've got some information from the Midwest. My good friend, John Spranger Jr. He said, next Saturday, the 18th, is a ride with the champs at St. Germain at the Hall of Fame in St. Germain, Wisconsin. He's going there, and he's going to get some footage for us. Wonderful. John, we will look forward to seeing that. Uh, yeah, we thank you so very much for doing that. As you're getting footage, one quick thing. Always be sure to hold the camera horizontal like this for a wide shot. It's very difficult to work with vertical footage. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much, John, for doing that. We appreciate that. Oh, and then Reese Flurry is weighing in on that blizzard. He believes it's a 79. Very cool. Very cool. All right, so let's see where we are here in the program. We are on item number four. Now, one of our regular viewers from the very beginning, Dirk Seams, uh, he go, he's out in the Midwest, and he uh, he takes video footage for us every now and then, and he was at the Midwest Ride-In in Elk River, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm sorry, Elk River, Minnesota. Uh, I think it was late January, the 27th or 28th, something like that. Uh, he got some video and still images for us. I, I Today, I took just the still images and put them into a montage with some music under it. Uh, we're going to take a look at that. And in future weeks, we're going to take a look at uh, some of his video clips. So let's take a look right now at that montage of still images. Yeah, very cool. Anything jump out at you there, Rob? I've never seen an L Sport before. Yeah, me I first saw the picture. I thought maybe that's a caboose, and then I seen the steer wheel and the twin tracks. And who who made that? I think, and let's put that out there to the audience in case someone knows better than me. But I I think it's something to do with the people at Chaparral. Um, I think they made a tri sport, like a three wheel bike, 
if I'm thinking of the right company, I might be mixing it up with something else, but oh, yeah. I, I knew we were going to talk about that. So I got a still image of that to put up, to pop on the screen. This yeah. is that all sport, really interesting rig. It looks like a, a fiberglass tub, like maybe a two parts of like the belly pan, all one piece. And maybe the top part is one piece as well. And probably a mid engine or a rear engine. I, I presume it's a twin track. I wonder if they made my pond my paddle boat. The top looks like it. <laughs> oh, could be. Could be. And anyone I've, viewing, I've if you never know, seen one of those before. No, me neither. Me neither. And if anyone viewing knows anything about this, please leave some comments. We would love to learn about that. And and there were a couple of others other stills that I stole from this as well that I want to take a closer look at. There was this machine right here. Yeah. What was going on with that? With that engine and those pipes? It looks like Snow Bee is what it what it's called. And um, he sent me another video with a boa ski that had a similar kind of engine with the sticking out and whatever the, I don't know if those are exhaust canisters or what, what that's supposed to be. If anyone knows anything about what we're looking at at there, I would love to, to hear from you. Yeah, that's different. It sure is. And then I'm going to widen the shot out a little bit right behind that. We have that Polaris and I have seen images of that, but I didn't know really that much about it. So, our, our mutual friend, Midge Rosebrook, of course, is a big Polaris guy. So I messaged him to see what he would know about it. Uh, and here's what he messaged back. There's two messages here. On the left is the first one he sent me. He said, that is the second generation drag sled that Polaris built. I couldn't remember what they named it. So I sent the photo to Curtis Bowman Crosby, a retired Polaris executive, and asked him, when I get the answer, I'll forward it to you. And then he sent me a, a follow-up message. says, okay, Mike, Polaris's first attempt at setting a world record was in 1969 on their X2 at 109 miles per hour. That sled was painted all blue. Also, Dorothy Mercer drove it to 106 miles per hour to set the ladies' record that year. The drag sled in this photo was the X3, the second generation. Not sure how well this did, but I don't think it ever set the record. By the time this was built, there were dozens of others vying for that title, and I think Marv Jorgensen may still hold the world record. Not sure if that's correct or what the speed was. Wish I could be of more help. But um, that is extremely helpful, Midge, and we appreciate that. Um, and with the information that Midge gave me, I was then able to do a little bit of a Google search, and I stumbled onto this. There is an article in uh, Snow Tech Magazine. There's a link to it in the description that talks about that whole era where all of the manufacturers or a lot of the manufacturers were vying for the, 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 the top speed title. And I'll try to read this with my bifocals here if I can get my glasses right. Uh, this is the clip, of the, the excerpt about this particular sled. It says, Polaris brought their answer. Let me take my glasses off. Their answer to the Boss Cat, a new speed sled called the X3, which featured improved aerodynamics that had the driver lying flat on his stomach and the engines tipped 90 degrees to lower the machine's center of gravity. Mike Baker from Polaris ran the sled to a top speed of 93 miles per hour. Skidoo ran their sleds, but they too ran well below 100 miles per hour. The Boss Cat 1 reached 108.69 miles per hour. It was a disappointing end to a year that wet the appetite of Articat and Skidoo entering the 72 race season. And if you're curious about learning more about that and the other sleds that were vying uh, for bragging rights, in that contest that year, there's a link in the description. You can read the entire article. There's, there are images and details about all of the sleds that were competing for that. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, and thank you to Midge also for sending that. We really appreciate that. Yeah. That's unique. Yeah, it sure is. Well, cool. Any any final comments before we move on to the next one? Or? I, I can remember back in those times where everybody was trying to get a fast machine out. And there's even a company that called Snow Pony. They were just a, not a well-known snowmobile. They even had a dragster out. Wow. That's mm -hmm. wild. Oh, and we've got some comments that have come in. Let's see where we are here. Uh, okay, Reese Fleury says, I'll get some footage of the whiteout. Wonderful. Yeah, Reese, thank you so very much. We very much appreciate that. And as always, like we mentioned before, be sure and hold the camera horizontal like this for a wide shot. It's hard for me to work with vertical footage. But, uh, yeah, thank you, Reese, so much for doing that. We'll share that for, for, for everyone to enjoy. Uh, we really appreciate that. Ah, here we go. Um, Stacy and Art Fosler, what motor was used on the early Roloflex snowmobiles? 
That's a good question. I don't know, but that, that's an excellent question. Hopefully someone viewing will know and have an answer for us on that. Um, now, Dirk, Dirk Sims is talking about all sport. Um, he's saying Stacy and Art Yamaha. So that might be what the motor was used on the early 70s Roloflex. Uh, oh, and that, that all sport apparently can run in the water. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And, it, and apparently there's a wheel kit you can get for it. <laughs> they need to bring that back. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, uh, Reese Fleury says an 800 hearth with a bagpipe exhaust. Cool deal. And he might be commenting on the motor for the Roloflex. So what company made the All Sport? Yeah, good question. If anyone knows that, I think it was associated with Chaparral, but I, it's very possible I'm mixing that up with something else. Um Okay, a Matthew Vincent Brumman says, I was at the Washington show in January. How can I share pics of that? I'm glad, yeah, uh, let me pop my email address on the screen. And it's funny you say that. We're, the next video we're going to look at is some uh, some images from the Washington show. And I, I've got a few things to say about that. But yeah, I would love to see some more. Uh, let me find the email address right here. This email address at the bottom of the screen is the best, play, best way to communicate with me. As I've mentioned in the past, it's very difficult for me to stay on top of the messages that come in at the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers Facebook page. They just come in so hot and heavy, it's uh, I just can't stay on top of them. And I apologize to all of the people who have messages there that I've not gotten back to. I owe you a huge apology, but it, it's just impossible to stay on top of that. Um, so, yeah, we would love to see some images of that, Matthew. Also, Reese Fleury says the 70 Rolo Flex was a hearth engine. Cool deal. Now, our good friend David from Alaska Railroad, regular viewer, says, good evening, everyone. Sorry I'm late. As you may know, I'm a snowmobile mechanic. We get a few inches of snow and all my customers come in at once. And what they're, they want their sleds tuned up and back the same day. Of course, once there's snow on the ground, it's got to happen like that. Chop, chop, right? <laughs> and then, uh, oh, yeah, Stacy and Art Fosler say, yes, it was a Yamaha. We got a thumbs up from Matthew. And uh, one more comment here. Okay, here we go. All sport bought boa ski in the mid seventies. Wonderful. Oh. Cool deal. Yeah. Thank you guys for that information. We really appreciate that. That's one of the things I really love about this podcast is the immediacy of us to be able to share information like that, whether it's about shows or technical questions. Um, yeah. Any kind of information is it's wonderful. And then um, back to that Washington show, we're on item number five. I had every intention of going to that show in Washington, Vermont on January the 7th, but something came up and I wasn't able to. Thankfully, my brother Brian lives in the area. He went and he was able to take some still images and some video. So what I did is I took his still images and put them into a montage with some music under that. Uh, we're going to look at that tonight. And then in a future episode, we're going to look at some of his video clips. Let me cue that up here and we'll take a look at my brother's uh, still images from the Washington show.
Cool. Yeah. So thank you so much to my brother, Brian, for getting those awesome images. Anything jump out at you, Rob, in there? He did a good job of that. He sure did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like those snow jets. Snow jets were a neat machine. And I've always wanted to take a Husky out for a ride. Yeah. But everybody, my friends all call them knuckle breakers. Sure. Because the handlebar comes right down in your knees. Every one of my friends are broke the knuckles driving one. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the downsides, I think, is that handlebar. Because if, if you go down a hill, they could come and catch you up under the chin. And if you yeah. go up, say, a snowbank or something, if you're not paying attention, you could pin your knees. I can remember as a kid watching the brochures. They had a thing you could pull logs with it. Yeah. It was a workhorse. Yeah. I imagine it had excellent traction with the engine right over those tracks. and Yeah, and they and, weren't uh, that big of motors in them, but, yeah. Yeah, now, really good I for ice fishing. I one at a carnival where the guy had th three sleighs on behind him. He had oh, one, two more behind that with the kids on it. Good little convoy. <laughs> it still just went putt, putt, putt across the lake. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And I have to say, too, that that Washington show, this is in central Vermont, Washington, Vermont, just outside the state capitol. This is their seventh annual, so they've been doing this for a while, and they've really refined it. Every year gets better and better and bigger and bigger. It's it's very much a show worth worth uh, taking in if you're in the area. Um, and I'm, I'm still kicking myself that I missed it. I really wanted to go, but at least I'm glad my brother got some images, and I'm glad that someone, some other people are going to be sending some as well. And I noticed they had stakes, and so different categories were lined up by the what stakes were. Yeah, They had a boa ski there, and beside it was two blue machines looking similar to each other didn't know what they were oh let me see because i got a right couple in the middle of the video tape it wasn't this one was it no 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 these were all blue i like it when people do that and have a caboose to match especially the articat cabooses they look really sharp those are nice yes yeah now there were a couple others one of the organizers of the show tyson bluen um hell of a nice guy this is one of his yes play cat play he took cat. me on a ride for that last on that last year that's a really interesting machine yeah and then this is one, I, I assume this is one of his as well, because do you see that little red sticker over the ski? Yep. It says Bluen, and that's his last name. So I, something tells me that's probably his machine. That's a snow bunny, isn't it? I it might. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. And let me see if I can find that image you were asking about. It'll just take me a second here. Washington show. Okay. Um, on the you right said hand it was side of the screen. There was two blue ones beside it. You seen the one good, the other one you only seen half of it. Let's see. It wasn't this, was it? Let me pull this up here. It's just taking a minute to load. Maybe it's taking a few minutes. It wasn't yeah, this one. That's it. Yeah, that first one is Sears. I don't know about the other one. It, this might be a Sears also. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, and um, so who made ahead. the Sears machine? I'm not sure. I'm sure that was private label. I'm sure they weren't doing that themselves. Yeah, that's a good question. Let's pose that to the viewers, and we we do have comments coming in. If if anyone knows who was making the Sears sleds at that time, that looks like probably the late '60s. Uh, yeah. Let's get caught up on our comments here. Uh, here we go. Oh, Matthew says I'm famous. Absolutely, this is the place to do it, man. Absolutely, and then we've got. Rowdy till we die. Yes, sir. C.A. Pat from Thetford Mines, Quebec, home of the Snowjet Factory. Wonderful. Now, if there's any photos or, or any kind of stories about the Snowjet activities back in the day, we'd love to hear from that. Hear about that. Um, David from Alaska Railroad says it's amazing how many of those old sleds survived through all the years. Yeah. Absolutely. And then uh, Rowdy till you die says check your chat, boys. We'll check that out here. Uh, working my way down. Okay, yeah, Reese says you're definitely famous, Bremen. Cool deal. <laughs> and then Matthew uh, says, thank you for the pictures of my machines, the 63 ski -Doo, ski Sears, and Blue Scorpion. So these are the ones that, that the Washington show. So he oh. brought those to the Washington show. Wonderful. Very cool. It's a small world here, isn't it? Yes. And then, uh, oh, David from Alaska Railroad says, next Thursday, five of us are taking a sled trip to Eagle River, Wisconsin. We'll be visiting the famous racetrack and a few muse museums, and he's going to get some photos for us. Wonderful. So I love the sound of that. This is one of the things I love about this podcast is that people can share uh, vid uh, videos and images with us, and we can put it on here for everyone to enjoy. All I ask, if you're, if you're gathering video or images, try to hold your camera horizontal like this for a wide shot because it is difficult to work with vertical footage when I'm editing. But, yeah, thank you so very much, guys, for, for – uh, 
you know, getting us videos and footage is something we can all enjoy as a community. And then uh, Matthew says those seers are all scorpions. Interesting. So scorpion was private labeling, labeling those for seers. Mm -hmm. We've got more information. So 65 seers, 65 scorpion, and 60, 67 seers with the red stripe. Let me go back and see if I can pop that on the screen. Yes. Okay. We've got the oh, comment oh. in the. Now we're getting okay. somewhere. I thought so, that might have been a boa ski, but I guess boa ski had two headlights on the front. Yes, I think you're right. Yep. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So we've got the comment with the sleds, and those are Matthew's sleds. Boy, it is a small world. <laughs> that is that is very cool. And then uh, we got some, a couple more quick comments. Our friend Mark Gosso, uh, Google says the Sears snowmobile was made from 65 through 72. The 65, 66, and 67 models were produced by Trail a Sled Corporation, which, of course, was Scorpion, for Sears Roebuck. The 65 model had a fiberglass chassis that could be found in the Popular Science magazine. Oh. Excellent. Good information coming across on here tonight. This is amazing. And uh, my, our good friend James Spranger, his brother John Spranger Jr., I think they're twins, the two of them, uh, but James is saying another great show, regular viewer from Wausau, Wisconsin. Very cool. It's, it's wonderful, this sense of community we have going on here. Uh, this is really nice. This is everything I could hope for with this podcast is to, to have that kind of a community where we can all share information. Uh, it's, it's something we can all enjoy together. Uh, let's see. So we've got um, one more video we're going to look at here. Now, this is um, this will all make sense as I play it, but uh, our good friend Midge Rosebrook, he is the founder of the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Now, uh, between Christmas and New Year's, I think it was, I'd, I'd gone over to his house in Lancaster, New Hampshire, and we made an announcement of all of the new inductees for the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. That'll be they'll be inducted this fall. While we were doing that, we were joking around, fooling around, and he got his uh, jug of M's oil, and he wanted to do a video message for Rob. So we did that, and we'll be seeing that in a moment. And then uh, we played it for Rob. Rob liked it, so Rob responded by sending uh, Midge a care package. So let's take a look now at Midge opening his care package. And then uh, this is just going to escalate, I think, into infinity. But let's uh, take a look. We're having an awful lot of fun. And, oh, I'm in the wrong place here. It just takes a second to get back where I need to be. All right. Stand back, everyone. We're going to play the video. All right, so we are yeah. back in Midge's kitchen. How you doing, Midge? Oh, good, good, Mike. Good. Yeah, uh, uh, Rod gave me a, a gift here that, that Mike brought uh, down to me, and uh, we're about to unveil it. I don't know what it is. And yeah, we were here so. just a few weeks ago doing some video, and we made, we did a video message to Rob. Um, I, I did. I, I'm an, an, I'm an, an AMS oil. Uh, I, I'm a believer in AMS oil, and... Uh, I've got some, uh, I, I run uh, the racing oil in my uh, Polaris vintage sled. Yes. So. And uh, Rob enjoyed Midge's message, Midge's video message, so he sent this to us as a gift. And we're going to open it up right now and this. see what he sent to us. Yeah. yeah. Well, you do All the honors. All right, let's do the honors here. There you go, Mike. Cool. It's like Christmas all over again. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Man, look at this. Wow, oh, look at that. Wow, look at this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, there's two in there, that, one for each of us, and he said one's yeah, an XL and cool. one's a medium. Is All medium right. a good size for you? Yeah, my, I could probably take a small or a medium. Oh, good. And, That's uh, the medium right there, I think. And this is, uh, this is the medium. You want to put a what? An uh, XL. Okay. Yeah, you said we put them on and yeah, let's try it. show them the merchandise. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much, to Rob. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, thank you very much. And there we are. Oh yes, let's uh, yeah. get a oh, shot yeah. of us. Oh, hoodies. Yeah, it's a hoodie. Look at me, dear. All right. Nice. <laughs> okay. And we'll put them on. Yeah. Oh, nice and warm. 
Don't you wish you had that earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it fits you good. Oh, yeah, it fits great. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So are now we're the Amsoil Twins. Here yes, we are. Yes, you do. Yeah, thanks an awful lot. Yeah, this yeah. is amazing, Rob. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, got a hoodie. Yeah, we'll get the hoods yeah. going. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and to anyone who's wondering what started all this, this is a, a video message that Midge did to Rob a little while back. I'm going to play that right now in editing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can see what started all this. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, when we were uh, announcing uh, the 2023 inductees for the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame, I knew Rod was a Ron was a uh, uh, an Amsoil dealer, and uh, he always uh, advertised uh, the Amsoil products on on Mike's podcast every Thursday night, and uh, he's the mainstay of the of that event right now. And uh, he and Mike have collaborated on the uh, Amsoil products, so I thought I would uh, throw a pitch his way. And I brought up my little gallon jug of uh, of racing oil, Amsoil racing oil that I use in my Polaris flat. So yeah, yeah, and uh, and he and, and uh, he appreciated it. Yeah, I guess sure. so. Yeah, and it's a very nice gift, and I appreciate that. For so. sure. Yeah, thank you so much, Rob. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. Stay tuned for what started this. We're going to run the video of the, the, what started this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Great. Right. All right. Well, this is for our uh, friend uh, Rob yeah. Hilditch. The Amsoil guy. Uh, see what I have here, Rob. And uh, I think you have a photo of my sled uh, last year at Pittsburgh. Mike, you can probably yes. pop that up. I, uh, I've got this uh, 1975 uh, Polaris clone PDC. It started out as a 77 TX 440. And I uh, had Mark Melanger do the job. and. Mike has got a photo of it, I believe, somewhere, and you can pop it on. And there's a photo of me sitting on that sled, uh, getting ready to head out in the Pittsburgh ride up up north in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire, this last March. It was 35, 40 degrees. We had eight inches of wet, heavy snow. It snowed all day. And I was trying to break in this new engine. It was probably the worst uh, conditions of trying to break in an engine is to take off on a 30 mile run uh, at 50 60 miles an hour because that's the speed these guys were going up there uh, to, to break in this new engine but it ran perfect all day long and I and I believe a lot of it is probably due to this racing Amsoil that I use it's a uh, you only use like, uh, I think I did a little more than 50 to 1. It says 50 to 1 here, but I think I did more like 40 to 1 to break in the engine. And so anyway, just a shout out to Rob that uh, that I'm using it as well. And uh, there you have it. And uh, <laughs> happy trails when we get snow. Yes. And if you're curious about buying some Amazon, just click the link in the description. And uh, in doing so with, with my dealer number, you're helping to support the podcast. And I thank you so much in advance for doing that and thank all of the people who have been doing that. That helps to support the podcast. Yeah. And thank you. That yeah. helps to support right, the Mike. podcast. You're doing this. Yeah. Well, I thought this would make Rob smile. Oh, for sure. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So did that make Rob smile? It did. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. After I seen that video, I said, I got to do something for you guys. Yeah, that was amazing. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Cool deal. Yeah, that, that's turned into it. It's taken a life of its own, I think. Yeah. Um, we do have some comments that have come in. Uh, oh, where was I? Okay, here we go. Uh, Matthew says both blue sleds are all fiberglass. He's talking about those sear sleds. And then uh, someone on Facebook saying, hi, Mike and Rob. Great show. Cool deal. Nice. And then uh, David from Alaska Railroad says, nice shirts. He says, thanks to Rob. Rob is a great guy. He sent me some goodies this past spring. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Well, we haven't had a picture of that yet, have we? I think we do. I don't know if I can pull it up. It's not handy, but he did send us a picture with his Amzo. I think he, we sent him a shirt or a hat or something. And yeah. Yeah. We'll have to pop that on the next uh, next episode. I think he won a trivia question or something. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. 
Very cool. So yeah, we are at the top of the hour. It's time to wind this party down, but it has been a wonderful party, I have to say. Um, Great show, lots of new information. Yeah, I love that, seeing the information going back and forth like that. We can pose questions, they can pose questions, and someone somewhere has got an answer to it. Uh, really nice. I really enjoy if, that. If, if someone's got a snow event on the barn that they think we can't, our, our customers can't guess, we'll send them a prize to them. Ah, good idea. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, whatever whatever obscure machine you've got or something that's so um, far decayed that it's unrecognizable, uh, send us yeah. an image of it and we'll, we'll put it to the audience to try to figure it out. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. And as always, you know, any kind of questions, comments, information about shows or events, races, this is the place to share that. And especially uh, images, still images and video. We love to put that on here for all of us to enjoy. Because if you're like Rob and I and the viewers who are on here tonight, we love looking at that stuff. And you probably do, too. That's why you're here an hour into this show is because you enjoy that. So if you're going to any kind of events, races, shows, to take your cell phone, be sure and hold it horizontal like this for a wide shot. It's hard for me to work with vertical footage. Uh, take some video or, or images, share it with us, and, and we'll put it up here for everyone to enjoy. And we do have a few last comments that have come in here. Uh, yes, Matthew says, thank you guys for a great show. You are very welcome. Thanks for coming on. Uh, David from Alaska Railroad says, thanks to Mike and Rob. Good show. Thank you very much. Reese Fleury says, thanks for a great show. Cool deal. Mark Gosso says, Polaris and Ski Daddler also made sleds for, ski for Sears. Cool oh, deal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, bring it on. Cool deal. Any final thoughts, Rob, before we close out the program? Reese, Reese has got a couple of machines beside his shed. I'm not sure what they were. There's three of them there, so that could be our first guessing game. Yeah, it's a mystery sled. <laughs> Absolutely. That can be a new segment, Guess the Mystery Sled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool deal. I love it. All right, everyone. Yeah, thanks, Rob, for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you also to all the viewers for joining us and making making this as fun as it is. Uh, this is This is great. Great show. We'll see you next week, Mike. All right, everyone. Have a good evening. Okay. Bye-bye. Hello, everyone. This is Rob and Mike. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing good. Mike, yourself? Very well. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Now, uh, today, we're going to be talking about AMSOIL. And uh, in a few moments, we're going to show you how you can get the deepest discounts, free shipping, and free gifts when you order your AMSOIL products through us. But first, I'm going to ask Rob to give you a quick description of what AMSOIL is and why you should consider using AMSOIL products in your motorized vehicles. Thanks, Mike. AMSOIL is 100% synthetic oil. Everybody uses AMSOIL for a different reason. Some people like the benefits that AMSOIL is warrantied for 25,000 miles or one year. The reason we can do that is because AMSOIL doesn't oxidize. It doesn't form the usual carbons, gum, sludges like petroleum oils do. That's why we can keep it in the engines longer. Petroleum oils never do wear out. They oxidize themselves. That's why they have to be changed at 3,000 kilometers. And AMSOIL likes the benefit that you only have to change the oil once a year. That saves some money. Some of the people like the benefit of AMSOIL is it's a slipperier type lube. By having a slipperier type lube, it cuts down friction drag. By less friction and drag, engines run 20 to 50 degrees cooler, better gas mileage. Now, AMSOIL says 25% more protection than the industry requires is in the AMSOIL bottles. My average customer gets about 10% increase in gas mileage. That's a big savings. Yeah. And by cutting down friction and drag, for every 10 degrees you cut down the friction and drag, doubles the life of the engine. So by having the engine run cooler, it makes it last longer. Some people like the benefit of the range of the AMSOIL. AMSOIL's flash point is 425 degrees and it pours at 50 below zero. Wow. If you ever tried petroleum oil when it's 10 below, it turns to the honey. And yeah. in the summertime, petroleum oil thins out, and once, once it thins out, that's when it starts breaking down. So AMSOIL is an all season oil, can give you better gas mileage, longer engine life, less maintenance. It ends up being cheaper over a year's time running AMSOIL than it is petroleum oils. That's amazing, that's amazing. And AMSOIL is, is available for pretty much any motorized vehicle, uh, any from, anything from lawn equipment, cars, trucks, boats, ATVs, motorcycles, snowmobiles. Yep, yep. And a lot of people phone me up and say, well, what's the benefit of our gear loop? Exactly what I told you about the engine oil. It pours in cold weather. It runs cooler, makes the equipment last longer. And they say, well, what's the benefit of the small engine? Same thing. Makes the engine run cooler, last longer, better performance. So it saves on all the applications that AMSOIL has available. Wonderful, wonderful. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk now. Uh, hopefully this has convinced people uh, to think about maybe 
joining us in the AMSOIL experience. Let's talk about some of the discounts and free shipping and how that all happens. I'm going to pop a, a graphic on the screen. And uh, yeah, by all means, if you want to talk talk people through how this preferred customer program works. AMSOIL has a number of different programs. One of our main ones is a catalog customer where somebody can order directly out of our catalog. If they order out of the catalog, they order $100 worth, AMSOIL will ship it right to their house. But our best program is our preferred customer. For only $10 for six months, you become a preferred customer, you save 25% on all the product. You order $100 worth, they're going to give you free shipping. Um, you don't have to order a whole case. You can mix and match. Say you want four bottles of small engines, seven bottles of 5W30, and a couple of gear loops. You can mix and match. You can order one bottle at a time if you want. There's no minimums, no maximums. By being a preferred customer, you save over 25% on all the products you're going to buy. Angela sends you extra gifts, uh, a $5 gift certificate on your birthday, $5 when you renew, renew your account and stuff like that. So it's a good way to save on some of the products you want to buy. For sure, for sure. Yeah, it's an incredible value. And this is the, the deepest level of discount that anyone can get when ordering Amsoil. Is that correct? It is. It is. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's take people through the step-by-step the -step experience of, of placing an Amsoil order. Then that would include signing up for the preferred customer discount, or sorry, preferred customer program so they can receive those deepest levels of discount. So let's go to the website. This is what the website is going to look at look like. These are some screenshots. If you Once you go to Amsoil.com, there's a link in the description, or you can just type that into a browser, Amsoil.com. This is the page you land on at the upper corner of the page there. You see how I've circled in red. That is the link to click the join now link that will take you to the preferred customer program page where you can take advantage of all of these discounts and free shipping and everything that we've just been talking about. This is what that page looks like. In the lower right, you're going to click join now. This will pop up. You select the duration you'd like, whether it's six months or 12 months and click add to cart. Now, once this, this uh, pop up goes away, you'll be back on the main page and the upper left, you'll see where I've got that red arrow. It says shop. Now you can start shopping for products and on your very first order, you're going to get these discounts and the free shipping as long as it's over hundred dollars. You'll get all of these benefits right away. So once you click shop, it's going to take you to uh, some product, the product page. There's different types of oils, lubricants, so on and so forth. For the benefit of this exercise we're doing now, I'm just going to click motor oil. It shows different types of motor oil. Let's click gasoline. Now this takes us to an item. It's uh, their synthetic motor oil. And you can see the item there and there's choices for different viscosities, but take a look at the price. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in. Uh, but if you've joined the preferred customer program first, you're going to automatically get the deepest levels of discount. That's what we're looking at here. You're saving $3.80 on that quart of oil. Instead of paying $16.29, you're now paying $12.49 paying for that quart of oil. That is the deepest level of discount you can possibly get. And then uh, you just add the, the, the quantity that you'd like. You select any other items that you're thinking about, add them to the cart. And once you uh, click add to cart for the final time, you're going to see this come up at the top of the screen. It's going to show your items and your, your um, the total that you're at so far, <coughs> pardon me. And then now uh, you just click view cart in the upper right and that'll take you to your cart. Uh, take a close look here at the upper right. That blue box shows that you're getting free shipping. You're eligible for free shipping on this order because it's over $100. That little yellow box shows that you've got the preferred customer membership on your order that gives you the deepest levels of discounts for the next six to 12 months. And then below that, you've got the, the items that have been selected. I just, for the exercise here, I selected nine quarts of the signature series, but that brings us up over $100 for the free shipping. We're saving $34.20. $34 and if you're ready to, to finish, you click checkout now, and that takes you uh, to this screen here. If you haven't signed up with an Amsoil account at this point, just click in the lower right to create an account, create a new account. It's going to ask you for some basic information, a name and those types of things. Now let's take a closer look. You'll see this gray shaded box. This is a very important box. This is going to ask you if someone has referred you to Amsoil. And if so, please enter my name. My name is Mike Lapierre. It's spelled right there on the screen for the correct spelling. And also the referral number, 304-555-94. That's how um, you make sure that Rob and I get credit for this. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, I have signed up for Amsoil under Rob. So when you order using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. So if you enjoy these podcasts that we're doing, this is a wonderful way to support the podcast because when you order uh, using this referral number, Rob and I both benefit. And the commissions I make go directly toward offsetting the cost of doing this pod these podcasts. So I thank you in advance for that, for using my referral number. I very much appreciate it. Uh, and once you've done that, you just go into the next screen to enter your payment information and you're done. Now, once you've entered, once you've placed your order that's over $100, uh, and that, that order includes your Amsoil Preferred Customer Program, you are now eligible to get a free DVD from myself. Now, this is going to be either a muscle car DVD or a vintage snowmobile DVD. Uh, use the email address on the screen, wkspodcasts at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know which email. I'm sorry. Let me know which DVD you would like me to send you, the muscle car or the uh, uh, vintage snowmobile DVD, and I'll get that right out to you. As you're typing in that, that email in the subject line, be sure and type in capital letters, free DVD requests, so it stands out as I'm checking my email, and we'll get that right out to you. 
So I guess the last thing, Rob, that we wanted to talk about is uh, if someone is considering Amsoil as a business opportunity. Um, yeah. Yes. If anybody has a retail or a commercial account and they would like to buy directly from Amsoil, just send Mike a line. He'll show you how to set up and you can buy directly from Amsoil. But if you are interested in starting your own part-time business, a part-time business that can grow into a full-time income, Mike and I will show you the Amsoil marketing plan. Amsoil has a large selection of products that cover almost every application. So it doesn't matter if you're in the snowmobile, boating, or ATV, and or, or hot rods. We have an oil for every application. It's a fun type business that I really enjoy doing. Where else can I go and have fun and make money doing it? And Mike and I are here to help you all the way along if you need any help on how to promote or, or to find new accounts. We're here to help you. For sure, for sure. So when you sign up under that uh, that number, this 304-555-94, you're getting Rob and I as a team. Now, Rob has been doing AMSO for 40 years. Can you believe that? 40 years. So he knows every aspect of this business and he knows all of the ins and outs of the products. So he'll be able to help you with any kind of product questions or any kind of questions to show you the different business models that you can do with AMSOIL. And then the other thing that you get when you sign up under me is I've got a strong background in social media. So if you need some coaching on how to generate AMSOIL leads using Facebook and YouTube, I'm happy to coach you with that when you sign up under Rob and I. Uh, you get both of us as a team uh, to help you, to coach you, to support you, whatever you need to get you, get you off and running with this business and having fun with it. it like Rob said, it's enorm an enormous amount of fun. If you're like Rob and I and you enjoy going to any kind of you know boat shows car shows motorcycle shows snowmobile shows anything with a motor you like going to those shows those events those races this is a great way to turn that into a a, a, a income opportunity for you yes yes and just by wearing my amzo hat at one of these events people come up and ask me about amzo people, people don't know where to buy it and i'm there to help them show them where they can buy the products perfect perfect well cool cool well this is great uh, any final thoughts rob before we wrap it up Amzo is a fun business. Amzo has been around since 1968. You know, it was the first synthetic oil to be AI approved. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's very early in the game too, isn't it? Yes. For sure. Well, good. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for viewing. Hopefully, we've gotten you excited, as excited as we are about the Amsoil products. We'd love it if you could enjoy, if you could join us either uh, as someone who uses the Amsoil products or to join the Amsoil team uh, as a business opportunity. And we thank you so much for viewing. Have a okay. great day. You have a good day.